born. I will feast on your entrails and devour your soul. <laughs> you know, Max, sneaking the bug into that exorcism was an uncharacteristic stroke of genius. Demonic possession is the gift that keeps on giving. What? Oh, Commissioner. Uh, no, that was uh, Max's aunt. Yes, 14 packs a day. What's that? Yes? Yes? No! Yes? Sweet suffering Saint Sebastian on the sousaphone in a short story by Susan Sontag. We're on our way. Let me guess. Our friendly neighborhood demon just burnt down another monastery. No, Max. We have a far more bloodthirsty adversary this time. The President of the United States of America. Who? The man's gone nuts. He's enacting all kinds of crazy new laws. What else is new? Federally mandated group hugs before, during, and after all major sporting events. So? He's curtailing civil liberties, threatening the environment. Hey, that makes three of us. And he's about to introduce mandatory gun registration. Get the keys. I have to point out, Sam, that we could have avoided this gruesome accident if you just let me drive. And I have to point out that we could have avoided this gruesome accident if you hadn't jumped on my head shouting Jersey Devil, Jersey Devil and firing your gun out the window. I swear that woman was a dead ringer for him! Well, here we are, standing in an open field west of the White House. Let's go bring the hammer down on that so-called Commander-in-Chief! Hmm, white paint, Christmas lights, and a small barbecue. Everything somebody would need to renovate, decorate, and then accidentally burn the place to the ground. Later, Max, later. Your name here. For naming rights to this building, please contact the Office of Desperation Accounting. Oh boy! Can we, Sam? Please? We'll see, little buddy. There is a small mailbox here. Uh, it's one of those ornamental mailboxes that doesn't actually open. That's government efficiency for you. At least the president has his priorities straight. Any golf balls? Nope. Please do not feed the submarine. What can you feed a submarine anyway? Nothing. Weren't you listening? Hey! My missing boxing glove! It's always in the last place you look. The White House Pool. Most secure waiting pool on Earth. Jimmy? Oh, great! What are you guys doing here? Oh, just saving the world. What are you doing here? I happen to take my vacations at the White House, and I need a little R&R. &R. Speaking of which, beat it. Hey, Jimmy. Beat it. Valley parking, two dollars. Way to knock down that deficit. Post no bills. I'm surprised this sign survived the Clinton administration. Suspect yourself. That's so Madonna. Hey, this phone only takes Susan B. Anthony dollars. It must be one of those stupid 555 phones. Yes, actually. 555-1984. Hey, Sam! Did I ever mention how I've memorized pi to 1,000 decimal places? It's 3.14159265358979... Nah, do you have a piece of paper handy? You want to write down the phone number? I remember the number. I want to write myself a reminder to smother you with a pillow in your sleep.
Step aside, buddy. Freelance police. Just a moment, sir. Papa Bear, this is Super Bowl. Possible situation at the front door. Talking dog and der, rabbit trying to gain access to the OO. Please advise over. Super Bowl? Yeah, that's a negative on the access permission, sir. I'll have to ask you and your little friend to step away from the White House. Doggy Daddy, this is Loose Cannon. Request permission to pants this goon. Over. Before we try physical violence, Max, let's try dazzling the man with our razor-sharp wit and labyrinthine logical conundrums. Ah, emotional violence. Good plan. Let us in, pal. We're freelance police, here to save the president. I thought we were here to stop the president by any means necessary. I was going to wait to mention that part, Max. Either way, sir, you can't get inside. Orders. Seriously, Jack, let us in. It's a national emergency. No can do, sir. Hmm, it's going to be tougher than I thought to trick this goon and get inside. I heard that, sir. And it's going to be impossible. Hey, no fair. You're not supposed to listen to casual asides. It's in the job description, sir. Report all stage whispers, soliloquies, and casual asides to the proper authorities. Curse them! They've thought of everything! Finest security force in the world, sir. Don't you get bored guarding this door? It's a rewarding job, sir. Doing my part. Keeping the president safe. Hey, Super Bowl! I'd like you to smell these two handkerchiefs and tell me which one smells more like chloroform. Not now, Max. Is that all you do? Guard this door? That's my primary assignment, sir. I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 100. Try to guess it while I drop increasingly heavy weights near your head. What's your secondary assignment? Varies. Receptionist, maintenance, light grounds work, public relations. Public relations? I'm a people person, sir. They have you guys doing odd jobs, too? Cutback, sir. Employee Reduction and Consolidation Act of 2003. These sunglasses aren't cheap. Hey, Super Bowl! What gauge syringe would be best for injecting you with a knockout serum? Just a hypothetical. You really have time to do everything else and guard this door? I make the time, sir. It's what I do. Did you call yourself Super Bowl? Codename, sir. I'm a bouncer. Secret Service humor. And who's Papa Bear? Section Chief. Runs the operation. Protects the President. Oh! Super Bowl! I get it! I want to talk to your manager. No can do, sir. He's with the President. I've had enough of this. Papa Bear, this is Super Bowl. Perp's exiting Zone 4 now. Seem disgruntled. Stay on the lookout. Over. Now can we push him down and beat him with sewage-filled garbage bags until he runs crying into the reflecting pool? Tempting, Max. But these Secret Service guys hold a grudge. What are we doing here again? We're either trying to see the President, or we're on the first leg of a doomed expedition to scale the mighty K2. What day is it? Tuesday. Okay, it's the President thing. Pretty nice place here. It'd be a shame if anything happened to it. What's that supposed to mean? Just that I'd hate for there to be an accident. How do you do that? Putting certain words in quotes when you talk. I've been practicing. What do you think of the White House, Max? There aren't nearly as many roller coasters as you'd led me to believe, Sam. That guard really takes his job seriously. I could create a distraction while you sneak in the door. The last time you tried to create a distraction, it brought down the power grid of the entire Western Hemisphere. You call it overzealous? I call it thorough. We'll never be able to get in to see the President. We should have just called him and saved the trip out here. Okay, let's go. Whee! Where are we going, Sam? Back to the office. I'll drive! Not while I'm alive. Exactly! One of these days, we're gonna finish that game. I'm still working on getting the rest of the darts from the police impound. Hello, constituents. This is your president. When I took office three years ago, I made a solemn promise to help you, the American people. Now, thanks to your collective short-term memory, I can say that I've delivered on that promise. In the upcoming elections, it's important to ask yourself, 
you feel safer than you did three years ago? Or would you rather return to the days when crazed packs of robotic hyenas prowled the street, targeting their death ray laser eyes on you and on your children? As far as you know, my administration is the only thing keeping your home safe from the bloodthirsty robotic hyenas. Remember that, and God bless America. Paid for by the committee to remain in office at any cost. The drawers are just painted on to make the desk seem useful. Who are you calling, Sam? Mr. Pizza, two medium pineapple and asbestos pies, please. Oh, yeah? Well, same to you, jerk. What'd he say? Thank you, and have a nice day. Who are you calling, Sam? Mr. Pizza. Hello. Oh, nothing. Just called to chat. What's up? Wow. I haven't heard language like that since we accidentally shot that sailor. Who are you calling, Sam? The White House. White House. Agent Super Bowl speaking. Have you checked the baby? Yes, sir. Sleeping soundly. Oh. Good job, then. We've got two very special agents coming to the White House today. One is tall, well-dressed, and devilishly handsome, and the other is Max. Grant them full clearance, over. Can't do that without approval form signed in triplicate, sir. Regulations. Keep up the good work. Bye. Whee! Where's the rest of the news collection, Max? It's a surprise! Mr. Spatula seems to have calmed down quite a bit now. Remind me never to clean his tank again with a cut on my finger. I still don't trust him, Sam. He's tasted your blood. My fellow Americans, we must remember to live life to the fullest and keep joy in our hearts. To that end, I have introduced mandatory psychological examinations Guarantee that all citizens meet the minimum required level of joy and goodwill. He's like a kinder, gentler Mussolini. Ah, yes, I remember that case. Particularly gruesome. Ah, yes, I remember that case. We should have Jesse James's hand appraised one of these days. I bet it's especially valuable because it's autographed. Ah, Brady Culture's hair. It makes for an unwieldy but oh-so-enchanting memento of our first case in a long while. He howled like a sick wallaby when I shaved it off him. Good times. This charred pile of scrap serves as a touching reminder of the fun we had at WARP-TV. I've determined that whether for food or for sport, I just really enjoy frying things. It's our favorite shifty card sheet, Leonard Steak Charmer. How you doing, Leonard? Good, good. I'm pretty sure we're not allowed to shoot captives. Calling Sam? The White House. White House. Hello, please hold. Roger that. Our phone bill is sure gonna be expensive this month. It's okay, Max. I've been paying them out of your retirement fund. Hello? Is anyone there? We've gotta stop the president, Max. Let's use the two most important tools of democracy. Guns and ammo. I wonder what our old pal Flint Paper is doing. Probably sleeping off a night of two-fisted, hard-boiled action, giving two-bit thugs the what for, all on account of some dame. Yeah, he's the coolest. This place could use a bit of remodeling. I was saving it for a surprise, but I booked us on that mega extreme office makeover show. We just have to sign the release forms and decide where to put the whirring saw blades. Hey Max, did you lose weight? I had to for my new modeling contract. 
I guess we should get back to work. Not yet. I'm still on my break. Mm, okay, now. Remember our old car, Max? I said I was sorry. Hey, a free home delivery sign. The sign's not free, but... Oh, my book is! Whoa, look, Max. It's our favorite cultish crackpot, Hugh Bliss. Hi, I'm Hugh Bliss. I want to buy something! Take my credit card! Put me on your mailing list! Anyone you want me to recruit? You're supposed to give the Stockholm Syndrome a few days to kick in, Max. Who has that kind of time? What's a big celebrity like you doing on our street, you bliss? Why, I'm spreading the great news about prismatology! The magic and science of unlocking the harmony of colors for a revolution in holistic personal and interpersonal well-being? Now translated into 15,000 different languages, including Esperanto! <laughs> Hooray! Hooray! Are the books selling well? Selling? You can't put a price on imagination. You can't sell the wonder of a daydream or the laughter of a child. He's right. I've tried. What was your book about again? Genetics? The Handbook for Multicolored Happiness? It's about everything. And nothing at all. Oh. What's this prismatology nonsense really about? All it is is... The total reawakening of mind, body, and spirit in a rainbow of true bliss. Ah. I'm really excited. Uh-huh. And how do we do that? Okay. Simply focus on the orange at the core of your spirit. Okay. No, wait. Okay, now. Shift your consciousness to the ultraviolet. Doing that? Mix it with the indigo of your imagination, and then let it slide down the rainbow of your hopes and dreams. Wow, I can't believe it was so simple. How do you stay in business? With the magic of volume and free delivery. You can have all the colors delivered to your home for no green. I don't get it. Show us a magic trick, you Bliss. Magic is easy when the colors of your soul are... Yeah, yeah, less chatter, more magic. Okay, how about I disappear? Well, your mind reading is obviously still working. It is! <laughs> now watch me as I vanish. Except you won't be able to watch me because I'll be gone! Hey, a free home delivery sign. There are so many other things to punch. I can't shoot you, Blitz. Max would never forgive me. President appoints action figure as Secretary of Defense. That is pretty crazy. Well, at least it was an action figure of John Schaub. Oh, I can dig it. Non-mafia owned casino destroyed by mysterious explosion. Mysterious? I gave my name to reporters and even posed for pictures. Sometimes blowing something up is its own reward, pal. President spied in love tryst with Sasquatch. I give him three months tops. Okay, here's what he said. The magic and delusion of wonder is a dream from your imagination. And I know you're listening, Sam and Max. Ah, creepy. Thank you, sir. Novelty gumballs. Shaped just like the real thing, but made of inedible plastic. Fool your friends, annoy your grandparents. Takes me back to my childhood. Whee!
Why shaken, Bosco? Ah, greetings, comrades, dog and rabbit. I'm having trouble placing the accent this month. Mid-Atlantic states? The San Fernando Valley? Hmm, I get more of a vague Baltic vibe. Something in a light check pattern. Ha <laughs> ha! Comrade Maximilian makes the funny joke. I am Vladimir Ilyevich Baskovorsky, Russian proprietor of Workers' Glorious Warehouse of Inconvenience, no? No! But now I make new start in America, which I love. So is no need to aim in sophisticated targeting equipment at me! What's with the Soviet bloc, Bosco? He's perfectly natural, comrade. I work with your American government in spirit of Glasnost. They know, they know! Who knows what? The feds, man! Uncle Sam! The government's watching us all the time. So that's why I always feel an overbearing presence just out of my field of vision, watching and judging my every move. That's me, Max. Why is the government spying on you, Bosco? I don't know. Maybe it's because I know too much. Um... Just humor the poor guy, Max. But I make new start in America, which I love. So there's no need to target in me. I suppose you've got some ridiculously complex whirligig to defend yourself against the feds? He's the people, comrades. Workers will overthrow fascist regime. What about us loafers? All are welcome. Come day of victory, workers will unite to bring downfall of corrupt administration. We will number in tens of millions. That's a lot of Bolsheviks. No, he's all true. Plus, I'm working on a satellite missile defense system. Missile defense system? Isn't that more than a little bit overkill? Yet! We are strong like bear against attack! I'm working on modifying BTAS part D. Your anti-delivery system? That's right. It was already programmed to keep people from delivering goods to the store, so I just went into the database and changed beef jerky to intercontinental ballistic missiles. So now anyone can just deliver a blimp load of beef jerky to your store without fear of reprisal? It's small price to pay for freedom. Tell us about that missile defense system again. I'm working on modifying BTAS part D. Once I get funding for it, it'll be able to shoot down any ICBMs targeted at the store. Something in here smells like fermented hate. It's like sweaty jockstraps soaked in boiled cabbage with a dash of sulfur. Keep it down, guys. You're scaring off the other customers. What other customers? Max and I are always the only ones in here. It's good thing. Merchandise is always available. Coming in here is like visiting old friends. Some of these cereal boxes are from the McKinley administration. I carved our initials in one of the weenies, so we'll be best friends forever, Sam. When's the last time you cleaned out the weenie rotisserie? Needs no cleaning. Adds vintage flavor to tasty friends. We want to buy something. Da is evil but necessary private enterprise. Do you have any potatoes in the likeness of Catholic saints? Nyet. Do you have any souvenir snow globes from the Mystery Vortex? Nyet. Do you have any Lobster Pots brand cereal? Nyet. Do you have any Tagalog rhyming dictionaries abridged? Nyet. Do you have any wiener cozies? Da. We just got shipment of those in this week. Let me look. Oh boy! Wait, did you say wiener cozies? I thought you said Navajo blankets. No, we're all out of wiener cozy. Do you have any Navajo blankets? Yet. What do you got? His most glorious invention, comrade. Is useful for how you say questioning. Questioning. Is true serum. Makes easy, even the most difficult, how you say interrogation. Interrogation. True serum. Is this another one of your half-baked overpriced gimmicks, or does it actually work? Both! Will make anyone get rid of inhibitions and telling, uh, how you say, uh, complete and honest truth. Your accent sucks. Hey, it's already working! We'd like that truth serum, Comrade Boscovich. He's good! Price is 867.5309 rubles. How much is that in real money? One hundred million dollars. I think your rate of exchange is a little off, Boskovorsky. Fall of Berlin Wall brings great strength to our economy. Isn't that a little pricey for truth serum? It's bargain! 
It really does work, and I haven't even tried it yet. Sam, this morning I used your toothbrush. Results are guaranteed. I used it to clean out my ears. This is refreshingly liberating. Besides, I need the money to complete my satellite defense system. I needed to clean out my ears because I've been rummaging through- Okay, I've heard enough. We'll take that truth serum. It's yours for only 100 million American dollars. I seem to have left my 100 million dollars in my other suit. We'll be back. Nothing for us right now. See you later, Bosco. He's no Bosco, comrade. He's only loyal worker Boskovorsky, who is no threat to glorious American government whatsoever. Is that clock correct? Well, it's only got one hand, so probably not. One dollar lottery tickets, two dollars. I'm feeling lucky already! What do we have here? Organ trader? Self-loathing weekly? Hot bunny? Ooh, let me see that! Hot bunny? No, self-loathing weekly! Special. Buy one, get one. What a deal! Are these weenies beef or pork? Or woolly mammoth meat? It's 100% all natural ingredients. Aged to perfection. Foamy bread. Made from real styrofoam? No, artificial styrofoam. I think it's the tinge of green that makes this coffee especially appealing. I take my coffee green, like my men. Sludgies. This week's flavors, caviar and borscht. Borscht, the red menace! Where are we going to find a hundred million dollars? I could donate my body to science again, but the guys at the lab seemed pretty spooked last time. Science fears what it can't explain, little buddy. Bosco's paranoia is really getting out of hand. You think he's acting crazy today? You should see what he was doing in those surveillance videos I took last night. This storm music sure is catchy. It burrows into my synapses like a deer tick. Now there's a quote for the album cover. See anything appetizing, Max? I can't decide. This store has items from every part of the food pyramid. And much of it is preserved as well as the items in the real pyramids. I guess we should get back to work. Whee! Lefty's tool rental shop is still vacant. Remember that afternoon when I put on a baseball cap and spent hours out here playing fizzball with Lefty? If you mean that night when you put on a hockey mask and spent hours chasing Lefty down the street with a chainsaw, then yes. Precious memories. Give me all you got. It's the Army's new recruiting slogan. That's a lot better than their old one. What are you, chicken? Gonna cry now, baby? Apparently, there is no room in the military budget for quality adhesives. It's unnerving how his eyes seem to follow me wherever I go. That fox is totally checking you out. Go for it, Sam! Romance is a lot like this cactus. Sharp and prickly at first, but worth the effort for the miracle of life at its core. I was thinking more fake and unappealing, but your answer's good too. Do you guys want to submit an application for my dating service? That depends. How extensive are your background checks? Some other time, Max. That may be the least relaxing sign I've ever seen. What about the one at the barber shop that says low fatality rate? I stand corrected. Skin art. 
Is that art for skin or art made from skin? Your ideas are effervescent pustules, Max. Sparkly and disgusting. I wonder what future archaeologists will learn from our most sacred treasure. That you can watch 250 channels and there's still nothing good on! Whee! Poughkeepsie Man Slays Three in Asparagus Rampage. Mad Chef Killer Cools Heels in Stir. Giant Plush Toys Suspected in Conspiracy. Go ahead, next caller. You're on Love Talk with Dr. Feel Nice. Hey, keep away from my intercom. Hey, Sybil. What's new in the world of frequent random career reassessment? Hi, fellas. I'm really excited. I found the perfect job for me. You don't say. That's right. I, Sybil Pandemic, am now a professional matchmaker. I thought I smelled phosphorus. I thought I smelled that joke coming down the turnpike burning oil and dragging its muffler? It's a dating service, Max. I figured that if a smart, successful career woman like me could be having so much trouble finding a date, there must be plenty of other people who could use help. You're having trouble finding your soulmate? You don't know the half of it. It seems like all the guys I meet are total losers. No offense. None taken. Hey! Or else they're borderline psychopaths. No offense. None taken! It's the borderline cases you have to watch out for. What kind of man are you looking for? Older men. Guys with a little history to them are such a turn-on. Oh, and tall men. And distinguished. And he should be experienced. All right, enough already. Yes, I will go out with you, Sybil. I thought she was talking about me. What are you looking for in a date again? I would love to meet a tall, older man with a good career. What's next on the career horizon? Next? This is it. What could be a better job than helping people find their perfect match? Volcano guy. Good point. I'll stick to the dating business, though. How many couples have you managed to escort to romantic bliss? So far, none. None is the loneliest number. But I've got a feeling things will start to pick up after the holidays. All that stress makes for a lot of messy breakups. And a lot of people looking for romance on the rebound. So we have something to look forward to. How's business? Slow right now, but those applications are going to start coming in at any moment. Could you find dates for Max and me? Seriously? I mean, sure. Why not? Stranger things have happened, I guess. They must have, somewhere. I'm choosing not to be offended by that. What do we need to do? It's easy. Just submit an application. What kind of stuff is on this application? The usual. Your best traits, and what kind of person you're looking for. Hooks for hands! Hooks for hands! When you're done, I'll put the application into my computer which analyzes your personality matrix at 15 essential compatibility points. I don't have a personality matrix so much as a personality vector. Once we've found a match, you call your date and agree on a time and place. Let me help you guys out. Tell me your good points and what you're looking for in a date. I'm very spiritual. A disciple of the Ancient Ones, enacting dark magic rituals to bring forth their reign again upon this earth! Rise, Shigarath! Rise, Abyag Solem! I lead an active lifestyle. Always running from the authorities. I can appreciate a person's inner beauty. I even have my own sonogram machine. She should have an air of mystery. Making frequent passing mention to her time on the chain gang, but when pressed, revealing nothing. She should love the outdoors. We frequently lock ourselves out of the office. She should love animals. Such as the elusive praying mantis, whose deadly but enthralling mating rituals she mimics. You really know how to ruin the mood, Max. Oh, and cybernetic implants, like an elbow that can connect to the internet. She should be tall. At least 12 feet, or 4 meters if she's Canadian. 
That's all I can think of. Oh, that's plenty. Now I'll just put your applications into the computer. And there it is. Max, it says your perfect match is... Cybernetic laser eyes. Oh, please, oh, please, oh, please. Well, that's interesting. It says your perfect match is Sam. Disturbing. And yet somehow not completely unexpected. And Sam, your ideal soulmate is... Wait for it. Max. Well, there goes another blow to the concept of a fair and just universe. Hey, Sam, what do you say we never, ever speak of this again? Way ahead of you, little buddy. How does this dating service work again? People submit applications listing their good traits and what they're looking for. Once we've found a match, you call your date and agree on a time and place. See you around, Sybil. What do you think of this computer matchmaking business? It's an abomination! People should find dates the old-fashioned way. A chloroformed rag in a dark alley? What can I say? I'm set in my ways. Were you going to ask me something, Sam? I was, but decided I'd rather not hear about it. What do you think of this computer matchmaking business? It's an abomin- A chloroform- What can I s- Sounds like Sybil needs a date. Let's flip for her! All right, heads or tails? All of her! Ever feel lonely, Max? No, I have the voices to keep me company. I guess we should get back to work. When you love what you do, it doesn't even feel like work. There are so many other things to punch. No can do. Okay, here's what she said. Hmm. Meter maid? Nah. Movie industry executive? Done that already. Hey, this looks good. Shuttle pre-flight analyst. Oh, it's part-time only. Thank you, sir. Where are we going, Sam? We're off to the White House. Oh, boy! Hello. Is anyone there? Hello. 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 Can't talk now. I'm on the phone. Sorry for interrupting. Hello. Is anyone there? Hello. Hello. Is anyone there? Hello. 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 Is anyone there? Okay, here's what he said. Hello, hello. Is anyone there? Hello. Thank you, sir. Hello, this is the White House. Hello. Now, a lot of these same folks will say that we're wrong for introducing this federal pudding embargo. They envy our freedom. I ask you. What have they got to hide? Unless they're secretly sitting on stockpiles of pudding, and oh yes, we will find them. They've got nothing to be afraid of. So in conclusion, America, get your back up off the wall. Dance, come on, marzipan and good night. It's worse than we thought, Max. He's crazier than a caffeine-addled dingo in an Adelaide maternity ward. I think he makes a lot of good points. Those puddings are trying to steal our jobs. And I especially like how he does that spinny thing with his eyes. by the whiskey-soaked beard of Ulysses S. Grant. That's it. The president's not crazy. He's been hypnotized. We've got to snap him out of it, Max, and pronto. How do we do that again? We hit him over the head, like we do with all hypnotized people. Oh, yeah! No, oh, no. It's a bunch of merit badges from the Weasel Scouts. I got one of those once, but they took it away when they found out what I used for faith. 
take a look at that. <laughs> I love this country. This snow globe has a little Apollo 13 inside. What happens when you shake it? I'm afraid to find out. Hands off the cameras! Hands off the cameras! It's a stack of pithy campaign slogans. Oh, don't fool with those! Wouldn't want to be caught on national TV with my drawers down. Again. Are these pictures of you with cardboard cutouts of other presidents? We're all cardboard under the skin, son. Funny how almost anything makes sense if a president says it. Hi, I'm George Washington. Anyone need their nuts cracked? <laughs> Please don't make fun of George Washington. Hmm, throw pillows shaped like stars. Interesting, since actual stars are shaped more like throw pillows. House of Representatives and Gardens. The Liberty Bell is a light for this room, just as America is a light for... Yeah. Metaphor is such an ugly quality in furniture. Looks like there are rats in the Oval Office. Sam, you've finally done it. A straight line so easy, even I won't touch it. This urn says Fluffy on it. Wasn't that Warren G. Harding's nickname? These plates commemorate the core values of freedom-loving peoples everywhere. Eating a lot and hitting things with sticks? Exactly. Roosevelt's boxing gloves, encased in lucite. TR or FDR? ER, I think. This is either an early draft of the Declaration of Independence or a crude map of Lithuania. Is that a potted plant or the Vice President of the United States? It is hard to tell the difference. I'm not sure who this is, but he must be important. U.S. Senate Talent Show, second place. My finest hour. Apparently, even U.S. presidents have mothers. Hands off, boy! That's my presidential calendar! Stand back, son! That there's the national budget! Hey now, that's my super special top secret ribbon. Don't touch it. Nice globe. Amazing how often I need it in this job. Good day, Mr. President. We come in peace, as far as you know. Oh, finally! The interpreters. Where have you been? Interpreters? Yeah, that is why you fellas are here, right? Sure, why not? Cause I got a meeting with one of them furrin dignitaries. Always talking that crazy space language. Who are you meeting with today? Heck if I know. They show up and start jabbering away about treaties and whatnot. I just let the interpreters figure it out. I just keep an eye on them to make sure they don't steal something or try to eat the cat. We're ready to start interpreting. That's aces, fellas. But the dignitary hasn't shown up yet. Show yourselves around the office. But don't touch nothing. Snap out of it, Mr. President. You've been hypnotized. Sure, I haven't been hypnotized. That's crazy talk. You've got to listen to us, sir, or we'll be forced to take drastic action. Don't talk to me about drastic action. You ever been pinned down in a drugstore parking lot by a pack of muskrat commandos with nothing left to lose? Ever had to gnaw your best buddy's leg off just so you could get his socks and put them on your own ears to fend off the enemy's deadly sonic regurgitate array? Now that's crazy talk. I'm impressed. Wake up, Mr. President. You've never given up on anything in your life. Don't start now. That's awful nice of you fellas, but I haven't been hypnotized. Now do we commence with the head trauma, Sam? What was that? We'll have to get the President alone, Max. 
Freelance police, you're under arrest. Freelance police? Now there's the kind of can-do vigilante attitude that makes America strong. Finally, someone who appreciates our greater calling. Seriously, you're under arrest. <laughs> oh, you can't arrest me! Foolish chief executive! Does he not fear us? Trust us, Mr. President. It's for your own good. Nah, see, it's the Secret Service regulations. I can't leave the Oval Office. You're still under arrest. We can get your administration back on track with just a hint of bloodshed if you'll just... Where does the little one keep his gun? Best not to think about it, sir. Keep up the good work, Mr. President. You've got to know when to hold him, know when to fold him. The man's a genius, Sam! I almost feel bad for doing this. It's for the good of the country, Max. Hey, Mac, do you work here? What tipped you off? We're freelance police, buddy. This is a national emergency. And we don't appreciate your sassy mouth. Auditions for new White House pet are down the hall. This can only end in violence. Hmm, this guy's voice sounds familiar. Do you recognize him, Max? Half the time I don't even recognize you, Sam! I'm over here, little buddy. Who said that? Do I know you from somewhere? Yeah, I'm that voice in the back of your head that tells you to mind your own business. The veiled threats? The surly tone? I've got it! You're that pit boss from the Toy Mafia! I smell a conspiracy! You smell a nosy dog who's going to get smacked if he don't stop asking questions. What's the Toy Mafia got to do with the Secret Service? What Toy Mafia? Oh, he's good, Sam. The Orso Nostra, the sacred organization you inducted me and Max into in a time-honored ceremony. The one that we infiltrated, repeatedly duped, and then blew up in a fiery explosion of death and property damage. I was going to casually forget to mention that part, Max. That's a very entertaining story, Chowderheads. Now, run along and play, whilst I protect the leader of our country. I think somebody may have hypnotized the President while you weren't looking. You, perhaps. Very funny. What do you do around here? I give out free t-shirts to the visitor who asks the dumbest question of the day. Please accept my apologies, but we're all out of Husky Boys sizes. Woo! Double burn! I thought you were on my side, Max. I just call him like I see him, Sam! You're the President's personal bodyguard? You catch on quick. We need to have a private meeting with the President. National security. Go right ahead. I meant private, as in wait outside and we'll call you when we need you. And national security, as in we need to clobber the President on the head to break his hypnotic trance. Your gift for subterfuge is uncanny, Max. And that's uncanny as in you two try anything and I'll plug you. You're always with the President? Even when he's got a... you know... Always. I never leave his side. Your codependency sickens me. And it sickens me in exactly the same way, doesn't it, Max? I mean, Sam. What's behind that door? It's a private club for people who aren't annoying me. You two ain't invited. Should we pummel him together, Sam, or would you rather take turns? We can create a national security incident after we've saved the President, Max. Seriously, pal, what's behind that door? It's the door to the war room, with unrestricted access to the United States' entire arsenal of long-range missile weapons. There's no part of that sentence I didn't like. Then it's unanimous. We'd like a tour. Nobody gets into the war room during peacetime. Stay away from it, or I'll have to escort you out. Two for the war room, please. Nothing doing. But Max came all this way. He's been dreaming of it for years. Can you look into those big brown slits he uses for eyes and crush the lifelong dream of a childlike rabbity creature? Even if I were moved by that kind of thing, which I ain't, this door stays locked at all times, unless we're in a war. We'll be back. I cannot wait. What do we do now, Max? I'd like to get the President alone and give him a piece of my mind. I don't think you have a piece to spare. The President's acting plum loco. This is the second most entertaining hypnotic trance I've ever seen. What's the first? Watermelon! How are we going to get the President back to normal? I think a blow to the head should fix it. 
You think a blow to the head fixes everything. But I've got a really good feeling about it this time. Pretty fancy office, isn't it, Max? One day this will all be mine! I join America and the rest of the free world in praying that will never happen. I'm glad we took this time to talk, Max. Keep in touch, Sam. I mean that. Don't even think about it. Shooting him would get me in trouble with the Secret Service and the Mafia. Assaulting armed Secret Service agents is one of the leading causes of getting yourself killed. I don't think that would be wise with a Secret Service agent standing right there. Okay, here's what he said. Well, don't that beat all. Hey, Chuckles, check this out. When you fold the dollar bill this way, it makes him look like he's Putin. Thank you, sir. Okay, here's what he said. Put that down, Mr. President. Don't make me have to get the hose. Thank you, sir. No one enters the war room. That's it. You two are coming with me. And stay out. And stay out. Hello. Now I have to get Sitting back to the president. Hello. He's not supposed to be alone. Excuse Hello. me. Hello. Oh, welcome, Governor Wizzer. The president has been waiting for you. Is anyone Governor Wizzer? Hey, who better to run a state than a washed-up, urination-loving former child star? No one! Hello, this is the White House. Hello. No, sir! I said soda abuse! It's a very important issue! Was I? No, comprende, son! But I'm speaking English! Ah! Oh, are, are you two fellas the interpreters? It's about time! Darndest thing, we just had a couple imposters in here. Dead ringers for you two. Were they walking around examining everything and engaging everyone in pointless conversations? Those are the ones! Those accursed clones! When will their devilish mimicry end? Help me out with this here potentate, would you? Can't understand a dang word! But that doesn't make sense! I don't even have an accent! Oh no, momento, por favor! Impatient little guy, ain't he? What's new, Wizzer? That's Governor Wizzer, thank you very much. What are you the governor of? The 51st and greatest state, West Dakota! Don't you guys read the papers? Just the funnies. You mean the obituaries, Max. Potato, potato. We're a young state, but with our own rich traditions that make us a distinct tourist destination, apart from the North and South. How did you get into politics? I won the election. It was a very close race, but I totally won the popular vote. Was it a runoff election? You see what I did there? Runoff? Cause he's wizard? You're still the master of fourth grade gutter humor, Max. What were your qualifications for office? I'm a television celebrity. Now there's a platform I can get behind. What brings you to the Oval Office? I'm trying to build up nationwide support for the MRSAPP. Who's Mr. Sapp? And why didn't you want me to know you were talking about him? I can spell, you know. It's the Mount Rushmore Soda Abuse Prevention Program. It's totally changed my life. I've been carbonation free for over four weeks now. Tell us about the MRSAPP. Be brief. I started the Mount Rushmore Soda Abuse Prevention Program after I became governor to help people get flat like me. But if we can't get federal funding, people all over the Dakotas are going to get right back on the pop. I don't work eight hours a day, six days a week just to throw my money away for some washed up soda junkies with no sense of self-control. 
You don't have any money, Max. Oh, right. Never mind. Good luck with that, Wiz. So you really kicked the soda habit, huh? And how? Back when I was on the pop, I was in a real downward spiral. That endless cycle of always looking for my next fizz, then having to take time out for number one. Then I saw that documentary about Peanut Franklin, and it convinced me I didn't want to be just another self-destructive former child star. Peanut Franklin, the lovable star of Mixed Nuts who was found in a seedy Hollywood motel room dead of anaphylactic shock? What you mean you ain't got no jelly? Still too soon, Max. Are you sure you wouldn't like a nice cold soda? Gee, thanks. I'll take a... Whoa, no! Stay strong, Wizard. You control the bubbles. The bubbles don't control you. Stop talking about soda, will ya? Stop talking about the crisp, clean taste, or the effervescent fizz as it pours over ice into a frosty glass? All of it! I've been completely flat for over a month now. I can't go back to the way I used to be. I just can't. Tell us about the MRSAPP again. I have to get federal funding for the Soda Abuse Prevention Program. Go flat! Just say no to carbonation! We're ready to interpret for you. Don't tell me! The President needs the interpreter! What'd he say, Sam? I'm speaking English! I don't even have an accent! Can't understand a word! See you around, wizard. That would hardly be sporting. Okay, here's what he said. Oh, artificial grape and cherry. High fructose corn syrup and sodium benzoate to preserve flavor. Oh. Thank you, sir. Hello, Mr. President. We're ready to interpret for you. All right, let's get this party started. <laughs> Mr. President, my fellow Americans. I come to warn you about a serious epidemic facing our country. The scourge of soda abuse. Many former popheads like myself found ourselves in the endless cycle of addiction and elimination until we believed there was no hope. I don't know what you're saying, son, but you're selling it, boy. Good job. I ask you, how long can this epidemic continue? What was that? He said... How long can this epidemic continue? Epidemic? What's this about an epidemic? The epidemic of soda abuse, sir. By 2010, four out of five children will be addicted to soda, and the impact on our nation's plumbing system will be disastrous. What was that? The epidemic of surly, listless teens. That is a problem. I blame them video games. What does that have to do with anything? I think he's confused. Let's start again from the top. Ahem. <clears throat> Once again, Mr. President, the impact of soda abuse on our nation's health cannot be overstated. I ask again, how long can this epidemic continue? Great job! Great job! What do you say? He said... How long can this epidemic continue? There you go about an epidemic again! What epidemic? Denying the problem won't make it go away, Mr. President. What was that? Baseball fever. It's sweeping the nation. You said it, son. The crack of the bat, the roar of the crowd. But you know my favorite part? The frosty cold sodas. Are you mocking me, Mr. President? Try it again from the top, wizard. Where was I? Oh, right. Soda abuse. How long can this epidemic continue? Come again? He said... Prepare to die, capitalist oppressor. Are you trying to pick a fight with me, son? No! I'm just trying to educate you on a very important issue. What did he say? Men, launch the dragoons. Our victory is at hand. Hold on there, son! We can still find a peaceful solution to this. That's all we want. 
The Mount Rushmore Soda Abuse Prevention Program will bring peace to the lives of soda addicts everywhere. Aim Destructo Beam at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Fire on my mark. Three, two... Wait! I heard that! That's not what I said at all! I must have misheard you. Let's start over. Where was I? Oh, right! Soda abuse. How long can this epidemic continue? Come again? He said. Your reign of terror ends today. Those are fighting words, boy. But soda abuse is a very serious problem. What was that? Surrender now and we shall spare your life. We will never surrender. What is he talking about? Let's start over. Where was I? We will lay waste to your cities and dance upon the bones of your children. I think I've heard just about enough. Soda abuse is a difficult topic, sir. But if you'll just hear me out... Beg for your life and I will kill you last. Wait a second! I heard that! That's not what I said at all! What was that? It uh, loses something in the translation. Let's start over from the top. Don't you realize that I've always loved you? Oh, well, I'm flattered, son, but... I'm afraid it wouldn't work out between us. What are you talking about? Is he taking it well? Fuck up, Wizard. There'll be other presidents. I don't understand. They're confused, Wizard. Try it again from the top. Something about soda abuse, blah blah, whatever. Hmm. <laughs> Sounds like one of them touchy-feely tax and span welfare programs. He said, hmm. Sounds like one of those... I heard what he said. Are you guys sure you're translating correctly? Don't blame us, buddy. You're the one with a speech impediment. Try it again from the top, wizard. Wait a second. We need to consult our translation manual. Take your time, fellas. We're not paying you by the hour. Are we? You're not paying us at all. Even better. Hold on a minute. We've got a bone up on our decoding. And that's not a euphemism. What's a guy got to do to get a drink around here? Aha. Uh -huh. I know what you need. And ice cold orange sugar fizz. I swear by him. No! That's not what I want at all! I must resist, but I am thirsty, and just one couldn't hurt. Frosty cold and so delicious. All the progress I've made! They were about to give me my five-week pin! I almost feel bad about this. I don't have a conscience, Sam. What's your excuse? Blessed angels of carbonation, fill me with your syrupy nectar! Ew! Yeah, now I'm not so much guilty as repulsed. Keep it coming! More! I need more! I need... I need a bathroom! Which way is the bathroom? Which way is Lincoln's bedroom? Ha! Oh, you do not want to go there, son! Place smells like a mausoleum in winter. But if you really want to see it, it's down the hall to your right. Sam, did you just make an innocent person defile one of the most famous rooms in U.S. history? Apparently, I did. Where was I? I need another soda. No problem. I've got plenty of soda. Yes, more! <laughs> oh, yeah! That's the stuff! I've already forgotten where the bathroom is! Which way is the bathroom? Where's the bathroom? Oh, that's easy. Go out the door behind you, take a right. It's the door with the big portrait of LBJ over it. Wait, say the line, say the line. Time out for number one. I'm sure he won't be long. He's an excitable little guy, ain't he? Where was I? Which way is the Watergate Hotel? Don't know, son. I've never been. You've never been to the bathroom? Tricky Dick was a big fan of the place, I hear. Did horrible things there. Un-American things. Oops, I think I translated that wrong. He asked, where is the reflecting pool? Out the front door, right in front of the Washington Monument. Can't miss it. That was fast. Where was I? Which way is the reflecting pool? Out the front door, right in front of the Washington Monument. Can't miss it. How come Wizard gets to go in the reflecting pool, but I'm not allowed? I'll explain when you're older, Max. 
Which way is the war room? It's that door right over there! But I don't... Oh, thank you! Where do you think you're going? I've got to get in there! Bad! We've got a priority red number two here in the Oval Office. No, it's just number one! Escorting the suspect to holding cell for interrogation? Come with me, sir. But it'll only take a second! Please, let me go! That was fun! Okay, now I didn't catch all that. What did he say? I think the war room door is only openable in time of war. Stupid old piece! I don't like Jodie Foster that much. Now it's time for some checks and balances, freelance police style. Max, will you do the honors? Gladly! Look it, fellas! My fingertips look like little tadpoles! They just don't make these guys like they used to. That's no guy, Max. It's a damned ugly puppet. Ah, the drawstring in his back should have been our first clue. Our first clue should have been the swirly eyes. But, silly me, I thought hypnotize -y, not hypnotize her. What? Yes, an ingenious device being used to hypnotize the TV-watching public. But who was controlling him? Gonna take days to get that smell out of the interrogation room. What? What have you done? He was like that when we got here. Sam did it! <laughs> so these two numbskulls managed to off the president. It was a deep tissue massage gone horribly wrong. Ninjas! Sam did it! Still... Ratings from the last State of the Union address were even lower than reruns of Midtown Cowboys. I didn't expect to have to replace the President so soon, but now that these idiots have forced my hand... Uh, we're standing right here. We can hear everything you're saying! It's time for a leader that people will have to listen to. Agents Jackson, Burr, and Degambe, we are moving the timeline forward. Commence Phase 2 of the operation. I'll prepare the new candidate. Quite the reaction I would have expected from a Secret Service agent discovering two people over the decapitated body of the President. What do you think this fake body is made of? Can I keep it? No time for that now, Max. We've got to stop the... Wait, what's that noise? Blessed scuba diving Buddha on a banana boat with cocktail onions and a map to the stars' homes. Yeah! They've reanimated America's most beloved president. I always thought Taft was shorter. Not Taft, you deficient. My fellow Americans, I am Abraham Lincoln. As you know by now, your president was recently murdered by two mysterious interpreters. But turn not to fear and despair. I have returned to guide us through this troubled time. A vote for me is a vote for Abraham Lincoln. I'll get it! What's that? Uh-huh. Lincoln Memorial. Right. Hydraulic motors and robotic implants. Yes. Okay. I see. We're on it. Wrong number? That was the commissioner, Max. If this new Mecha Lincoln wins the emergency election, the nefarious forces controlling him will have unchecked power to destroy the entire free world. I hate when they do that. That's why one of us is going to have to run against him. You got to answer the phone. Okay, fair's fair. Max, we're going to make you the next president of the United States. Yes! It's a stack of pithy campaign slogans. The buck stops here, a thousand points of light, and I did not have sex with that woman. Well, I did, but I didn't inhale.
It's the severed head of the president. I yearn to hold it aloft and turn giant sea atrocities to stone. You're thinking of Medusa's head. Oh yeah, I always get those two heads confused. Who do you like in the election? My money's on Lincoln, and Lincoln's on my money. Clever. Hi, America! It's me, Max! Remember, a vote for me is a vote for prosperity, alacrity, and the tyranny of my furry white iron fist. Thank you! He's too busy talking with his candidate. Mr. Lincoln, as a candidate for office, my pal Max would like to engage in a thoughtful discussion of the key issues. Followed by a round of spiteful mudslinging. Hmm, I see. Well, this is a bit irregular. As you're well aware, I'm the most beloved president in history. So I just assumed I'd be running unopposed. Oh no, you didn't! You ain't all that! I freed the slave! I was star of a popular television sitcom. I'm on the penny. I was on TV. Now, gentlemen, we can resolve this like adults through moderate reason debate. Very well, then. In the spirit of democracy, I say, bring it. And it's a beautiful day on the White House lawn as we bring you the first in a series of debates for this emergency election for U.S. president. In the Republican corner, we have the giant animated statue of Abraham Lincoln. And representing the random violence and destruction party, there is the hyperkinetic, rabbit-like creature known as Max. Acting as completely impartial moderator for the debates will be Sam. The candidates are ready, so let's listen in. Mr. Lincoln, I'd like you to tell the voters your stand on some of the tough issues. Very well. How do you plan to solve the problem of toxic waste? I'm glad that I've been given one more life to give for my country. And Lincoln is once again using his trusted campaign slogan, which is pleasing the crowd, but having no effect on his poll ratings. Where do you stand on religion and schools? I'm glad that I've been given one more life to give for my country. Lincoln pulls out his trusted catchphrase for this election, which delights the crowd, but seems to have no effect on the polls. How would you describe your tax plan? I'm glad that I've been given one more life to give for my country. And Lincoln dodges the question by pulling out his trusty campaign slogan, which pleases the crowd but has no effect on the polls. That's enough for now. Keep them coming. I'm ready for anything. Mr. Lincoln, perhaps you'd like to speak about the importance of family values. Of course. A strong family unit is the rock upon which our society is built. It's easy today in this age of your blinged out horseless carriages and racy daguerreotype magazines to believe that honesty and fidelity are outdated concepts. But I stand proud. I have been completely faithful to my lovely wife, Mary Todd, for over seven score years. I've never even looked at another woman. Mr. Lincoln, could you elaborate on your stand on family values? Without a strong, honest, and faithful family, we are all nothing. I myself have been faithful to my wife for over 150 years. Mr. Lincoln, the networks are looking for a soundbite. Would you care to share a few words with us? <clears throat> Thank you. This is a date that will be remembered for centuries to come. Today is the day we return America to greatness. I stand here at the steps of the White House, not above the people, but with the people. Only one man can lead the nation through this troubled time. I, Abraham Lincoln, am that man. The time to act is now. Thank you. I said basically the same thing. Greetings, miserable proles. People of Earth, your day of reckoning is at hand. <coughs> <coughs> Ha! <laughs> 
This election reminds me of a droll story. It seems Chester A. Arthur and the Pope were kayaking down the Amazon one day. Suddenly, a tiny Kandiru fish swims up the Pope's and lodges itself in his Arthur grabs the Pope's pliers and swelled up like a melon. And the Pope says, thanks! Last time that happened, McKinley wanted a No, wait, wait, wait. I think I told it wrong. I believe in the ideal of a global community, where America is but a small part. We must set aside our differences and work with our fellow nations, all united towards one goal. The complete and utter annihilation of the godless Belgians. I want to see a return to the prosperity of the America we once knew. A chicken in every pot and vice versa. If elected, I promise a return to a happier time in America's past. The days when giant thunder lizards marched over the fern-covered marshes of the Midwest, preying on the upstart mammals. I'm a uniter, not a divider. I foresee an America under one rule, an iron-fisted rule. One rabbit, one law. Let your neighbors know that dissent will not be tolerated. All hail Max. I have a dream, America. It starts out where I'm in an all-nude production of Death of a Salesman on Ice, but I haven't studied and I can't remember my lines. Suddenly, it begins to rain marshmallows, but that's okay because trees are made of graham crackers and chocolate bars are the official currency. I believe that by working together, we can make that dream a reality. We have nothing to fear but fear itself. And the chupacabra! Madre de Dios, he'll kill us all! I'm a uniter, not a divider. I foresee an America under one rule, an iron-fisted rule. One rabbit, one law. Let your neighbors know that dissent will not be tolerated. All hail Max. That is all. Stay frosty, America. I had a feeling that wasn't going to work. Kill me once, shame on you. Kill me twice? Shame on me. I can't just shoot him. That'd be dirty politics. It's the cue cards for Lincoln's speech. I'm glad that I've been given one more life to give for my country. It's going to be hard to improve your ratings in the polls. I already showed them how I can wrap my lower lip around my entire head. What more do these people want? They want to vote for Lincoln. Then we should fix that. Lincoln's really impressed the people with his family values platform. He should stop being such a stick in the mud and get out and live a little. Lincoln is really winning the crowd on the issues. The voters don't care about issues. They just turn off their brains and go crazy for Lincoln's stupid campaign slogan. Jealous? Very. Okay, let's go. I did not have sex with that woman. It's time for another in this ongoing series of debates between Abraham Lincoln and Max. We turn you over to our impartial moderator, Sam. Contestants, it's time for our lightning round. Mr. Lincoln, I'm going to name some of the tough issues facing our country today. I'd like you to sum up your stand on those issues in a few concise words. Well, all right. I'm afraid this will have to be completely off the top of my head, as I have nothing prepared. Where do you stand on religion and schools? I did not have sex with that woman. Whoa, the debate has taken on a decidedly confessional tone with that nonsensical reply from candidate Lincoln. Luckily for him, the crowd is ignoring it. That's enough for now. Time out. Max has to, uh, visit the little candidate's room. I'm drunk with power, but it just goes right through me. A thousand points of light.
How do you plan to solve the problem of toxic waste? A thousand points of light. And that doesn't really make a bit of sense. So it looks like it's politics as usual here at the debate. That's enough for now. Keep them coming. I'm ready for anything. Time out. Max has a therapist's appointment he can't miss. I think we're on the verge of a real breakthrough. The buck stops here. How would you describe your tax plan? The buck stops here. We're not quite sure what Lincoln meant by that, so it looks like, yes, the American people have decided to ignore it. That's enough for now. Time out. I'm glad that I've been given one more life to give for my country. Two wrongs don't make a right. Where do you stand on religion and schools? Two wrongs don't make a right. Did we hear that right? Lincoln just came down against both religion and education. Wow, that's gotta hurt him in the polls. Free home delivery. How do you plan to solve the problem of toxic waste? Free home delivery. Ooh, an effective but very controversial proposal from candidate Lincoln. And the crowd did not like that idea one bit. Let's see how it affected the polls. Give me all you got. How would you describe your tax plan? Give me all you got. And candidate Lincoln has proposed one shocker of an economic strategy, which even Democrats are calling a trifle excessive. That had to have hurt him in the polls. It's Lincoln's campaign flyer. I want you. Honest, dedicated, over a century of experience. Abraham Lincoln is your man. It's Lincoln's campaign flyer. I want you. Honest, dedicated, over a century of experience. Abraham Lincoln is your man. There are so many other things to punch. Mr. Lincoln, would you like to say a few words to the audience? <clears throat> Thank you. This is a date that will be remembered for centuries to come. Today is the day we return America to greatness. I stand here at the steps of the White House, not above the people, but with the people. Only one man can lead the nation through this troubled time. I, Abraham Lincoln, am that man. The time to act is now. Thank you. I've heard better addresses from the 411 operator. What did you just say? Hey, Lincoln! Captain Ahab called! He wants his beard back! I'm gonna slap you silly, you little punk! Save it for the debate, Max. Where are we going, Sam? Back to the office. Shotgun! Abe Lincoln wants you. Who, me? Oh! Ah, oh, greetings, comrades! 
You know, Abraham Lincoln is a really great guy. Wait, what am I saying? That's taking the no littering policy too far. Now, I hardly want to advertise our opponent's finer qualities. What's this? A new application? Yeah, it's uh, for a friend of ours. Let's see. Not THE Abraham Lincoln. He's tall, distinguished, loves the theater. He sounds perfect. That chump doesn't have half my cute, fluffy marketability. Do you think your computer can find him a date? Computer? Nothing. This guy sounds perfect for me. Oh, but he didn't leave his phone number. Next time you see him, give him my number. I'd love to meet him. We need to find a date for Sybil. How about December 7th, 1941? Sybil seemed pretty excited about going on a date with Lincoln. Women always fall for that bad boy image. I guess we should get back to work. When you love what you do, it doesn't even feel like work. Calling Sam. Sybil. Hello, Abe. Is it you? Uh, you bet. Honest Abe here. Very funny, Sam. I have to keep this line open for his call. Who are you calling, Sam? The White House. Abraham Lincoln here. Have you checked the baby? Colin Sam? The White House. This is Abraham Lincoln. I, Abraham Lincoln, am that man. What? I'm Abraham Lincoln. Is this one of those identity theft schemes I keep hearing about? Uh, wrong number. Who are you calling, Sam? Sybil. I, Abraham Lincoln, am that man. Oh, well, Mr. President, it's just, it's just such an honor to talk to you. I saw your application, and I was wondering, would you like to go out sometime? This is a date that will be remembered for centuries to come. Oh my, you are a charmer, aren't you? <laughs> well then, Mr. Rail Splitter, where would you like to meet? I stand here at the steps of the White House. At the White House. Got it. What time should I meet you? The time to act is now. Oh, I love that decisiveness. I'll rush right over. I'm gonna slap you silly, you little punk. What? I didn't catch that last part. I will feast on your entrails and devour your soul. Uh, see you soon. Gotta go. I stand here at the steps of the White House. What? Who is this? I'm waiting for a very important call from Abraham Lincoln. I stand here at the steps of the White House. So, a long-distance relationship wouldn't work? Is that what you're saying? Fine, then. Call me when you're ready to commit. Only one man can lead the nation through this troubled time. Fine then. If you're too busy, you can just say so. Today is the day we return America to greatness. That's a very moving sentiment, Abe, but it doesn't help me. 
Call me back when you've decided where we should meet. This is a date that will be remembered for centuries to come. Sure, I'm excited too. Call me back when you've decided where we should meet. I, Abraham Lincoln, am that man. Yes, I know, Abe. You are indeed the man. Give me a call once you've gotten over yourself and can decide on a time for our date. Only one man can lead the nation through this troubled time. I know you're under a lot of pressure, but I am too. Why don't you call me back once you've decided on a time for our date? So, to sum up, family values are the bedrock of this nation. Our fidelity, honesty, and loyalty to family is our most sacred asset as Americans. Candidate Max, your rebuttal? Yoo-hoo, Mr. Lincoln! I believe we have a question in the audience from someone who is not Candidate Lincoln's wife. Oh, hi, Sam. Hi, Max. Greetings, random harlot! Abe, I'm here! Are you ready for our date? What? I, I've never seen this woman before in my life. But on the phone, you sounded so eager to meet me. Listen to me, America. I did not arrange a date with this woman. Oh, so she's good enough to fool around with, but not to date. Mr. Lincoln, I can't believe you're doing this to me. The results from the emergency election are coming in. And it appears that former sitcom star Max has been elected President of the United States. In an unprecedented show of bipartisan solidarity, all of the country's political parties have desperately asked for a recount. Let's cut to the White House lawn to hear candidate Lincoln's address. You've got to be me, you idiot! He took the news much better than expected. Democracy? I will make you all my hypnotic slaves! <laughs> Max and the robotic Abe Lincoln will enslave the entire East Coast if we don't stop him. Who cares? I'm the president of the U.S. Let's go bomb someone into oblivion. Not just anyone, Max. Abe Lincoln must die. Yes. I'm glad that I've been given one more life to give for my country. What do we do now? Well, I just took office and a giant robotic Abraham Lincoln is rampaging through the streets of Washington, enslaving the populace with his hypnotic laser eyes. The answer's clear. We have to find a way to spin this. Okay, let's go. That's not even worth a comment. Where are we going, Sam? After that rampaging Lincoln. You're going down, Abe! Well, he wasn't hard to find. Just had to follow the trail of broken campaign promises. That's pretty profound for a high-speed car chase, Max. I like to think I transcend genre convention. He's in testing with the emancipator, isn't he? Abraham Lincoln, you sit down and behave yourself right this minute! I will destroy you! Calm down and maybe we can find you a good cabinet position. Unacceptable! Just as well, Max. It would cost a fortune to feed that guy. found the one thing he and I agree on. The bullets have no effect! He's made of marble, Max, and fueled by rage. It's Lincoln we need to stop at this point.
Finally, Mr. President, you're here! That's the president? People will vote for anyone these days. Obviously. What's that supposed to mean? It means... Never mind. Look, Max, all the soda poppers are here. I don't have time for foreign dignitaries. Check out all the cool stuff on my new desk! Stand aside, pal. The president needs to get into the war room. I'm afraid that's not allowed, sir. Perhaps you didn't hear our advisor. We would like to see our war room. No can do, sir. Orders. You can't tell the President what to do. Let us into that room. Just following orders, sir. No exceptions. We are most definitely not amused. Until I hear from Chuckles, my superior officer. I'm to guard this door. Your superior officer is riding on the shoulder of a 20-foot-tall Abraham Lincoln statue that's destroying Washington. It's covered in the contingency plan, sir. Why won't you let us into the war room again? Just following orders, sir. I can't let anyone into the room. No exceptions. Max says you can take a vacation. We will make an exception just this once. Thank you, sir, but no can do. I can only take a vacation on federal holidays. We'll be back. Roger that. Okay, here's what he said. Just step away from the door, please. Yes, sir, that is all I say. Thank you, sir. Hi, I'm George Washington. Anyone need their nuts cracked? Please don't make fun of George Washington. Welcome back, Governor Wizard. Here to give another demonstration on soda abuse? That's not funny! What business do you have with the President? We're all here to get him to settle the Great Dakotan Conflict. Whether it's better to leave by plane or just kill yourself and hope you'll be reincarnated somewhere else? No! Which state gets custody of Mount Rushmore? Why should your state get Mount Rushmore? Because they just want it for tourism. But my plan will save lives. It'll become a monument to soda abuse prevention. People will realize that just like Washington, Jefferson, Roosevelt, and the other guy, they too can overcome their crippling addiction to carbonated beverages. George Washington never had a soda addiction. Why do you think he needed false teeth? Why not divide it up equally? That would never work. It's not even. Each of you could get a third of Roosevelt. I want the mustache! I wanted the mustache! Okay, Max gets Roosevelt's mustache, Specs gets the glasses, Peepers, you get an ear and both nostrils. That just leaves me with the forehead! All right then, Wizard, we'll throw in Crazy Horse, but that's my final offer. It's not even finished! This will never work! It's just like last time! How did West Dakota become a separate state? The three of us ran for governor together! We got along so well during the campaign, and we were all such former TV celebrities that all three of us won! The voters realized they'd elected three governors for only two states! That's when the unpleasantness began. What was the unpleasantness? We fought for a long time about how to divide up the states. There was almost a war! But we divided everything up fairly and all agreed that Mount Rushmore should be in the South. We did not! You! I what? You! Oh, never mind. What was the unpleasantness again? We almost went to war over who should get control of Mount Rushmore. And it's all cause specs and peepers! What? Yeah, what? You! Oh, never mind. Thirsty? Yes! But you're not going to offer me a soda, are you? You know I can't resist them. We wouldn't do that. We've got, let's see here, orange soda, cola, grape soda, pop, some more orange soda, and tea. Tea, please. We're all out of tea. Soda? Why are you doing this? Stay dry, Wizman. Hey, Specs. Max, you remember... 
most omnipotent exaltedness Maxama, overseer of the nine cosmic planes. You remember Specs, the other soda popper. We vaguely recognize our loyal subject. What are you guys talking about? Kiss the ring. What? No. What business do you have with the president? We're here to get federal resolution on a dispute. It wouldn't be a dispute if you... If I what? Nothing. Awkward. What business do you have with the president? We're here to get... It wouldn't... If I... Nothing. Awkward. What have you been up to? Winning an election. I'm now the governor of South Dakota. Hey, just like Wizard. No, not just like Wither. I was the first one of us to run for office. Heh, <laughs> like you invented it. You just... Ah, uh, forget it. Sing your theme song for us. No, I don't sing that anymore. I want to be respected as more than just a beloved TV celebrity. If it makes you feel better, you were never really that beloved. Sam and I always watched your show with detached irony. Later, Specs. Look, Max, it's our old pal. <clears throat> Look, Grand Imperial Warlord Maximus Optimus, Keeper of the Seven Keys. It's our old pal, the former child star and embarrassing idol semi-finalist, Peepers. That's former child star and embarrassing idol semi-finalist, Governor Peepers. You're a governor, too? That's right! I got North Dakota! North Dakota, the leftover state. I thought it was... North Dakota, still warmer than Saskatchewan. Hey, be nice! We've got a rich and varied history! North Dakota, hope you like snow! North Dakota, come climb all over our big white butte! Hey! Sorry, I got caught up in the moment. What's there to do in North Dakota? Plenty! Snowmen, snow angels, snow forts, snowball fights, homemade ice cream, and of course, the majesty of Mount Rushmore! That hasn't been decided yet. Right, I spoke too soon. What business do you have in the Oval Office? We need the president to settle custody of Mount Rushmore! Max has the presidential pen. Somewhere. Just tell me where to sign. Great! The problem is solved! But seriously, if you guys see the president, tell him we're waiting. Max really is president now. It was in the papers. We haven't been watching the news back in Fargo. We've been so busy with the arms buildup. What was that? Uh, did I say arms buildup? I meant winter paradise toboggan and scrapbooking jamboree. Can't we all just get along? We can if we all just keep quiet and avoid another incident. Honesty is rarely the best policy. All us presidents know that. So long, peeps. Okay, here's what he said. Specs thinks he's so smart. We'll see who's the smart one once the Fargo militia comes to town. Thank you, sir. Okay, here's what he said. Oh, artificial grape and cherry. High fructose corn syrup, sodium benzoate to preserve flavor. Oh. Thank you, sir. Okay, here's what he said. Those incompetent brothers of mine are messing everything up! What? I didn't say anything. Thank you, sir. What are we doing here, Max? I keep getting whiny memos about the giant robotic Abraham Lincoln who's rampaging through Washington, enslaving the populace. I guess we'd better do something about that. Can't you get us into the war room, Max? I kept hearing about presidential powers, but it's all just boring bureaucratic stuff. 
I was hoping I'd be able to make things explode with my mind. What's the date today, Max? I'm President of the United States, Sam. What date do you want it to be? The soda poppers aren't the close-knit band they used to be. They're just one inappropriate comment away from full-on violence. Just like you and me, pal. I'm glad we took this time to talk, Max. Keep in touch, Sam. I mean that. I'm not really thirsty. Hey, look, Max. It's the presidential discretionary budget. You have $100 million to allocate however you want. What a delightfully random and convenient figure. It's the Secretary of Presidential Whimsy Ribbon. Looks like Max can use this to appoint someone as an honorary cabinet secretary. It's the official United States calendar. Twelve of the hottest Supreme Court justices in their skimpiest, naughtiest swimsuits. Even better, Max. You can actually change the official date. Oh boy! We declare today April 1st. The first day of Sam's indefinite lockup in the dank dungeons beneath the White House. What? I thought we were pals, Max. April Fools! Not a good choice for a cabinet secretary. It's your lucky day, peepers. We would like to appoint you Secretary of Wide-Eyed Unrealistic Optimism. I can't accept that! I've got a state to govern! Specs, Max has a surprise for you. We would like to appoint you Secretary of Anal Retention. Thank you, Mr. President, but I've already got a job I love. Hey, Wizard, Max has something special for you. Is it a soda? Even better! We now appoint you Secretary of Incontinence! Oh, well, thanks, but I've got to focus on being governor and stopping soda abuse. Who are you calling, Sam? Sybil. Hello? Hey, Sybil. Just wanted to chat. I have to keep this line open for my client, Sam. Who are you calling, Sam? Sybil. Those incompetent brothers of mine are messing everything up! What? I didn't say anything. Who is this? I now appoint the Secretary of the Hen House. He's stuffed, Max. That makes it easier to keep my eye on him. I now appoint the Secretary of Labor. Thanks, but no thanks, Max. But you've had about a dozen different jobs. You'd be perfect for a cushy cabinet position in charge of the country's labor force. What do you think my first job was? There's a reason I switched to tattooing. Hiya, Sybil. How are things in the world of computer-generated romance? Oh, I'm not doing that anymore. Can you believe that guy? Never mentioning that he was married? Men are such self-centered jerks. Preach it, girlfriend! So you changed careers again? Yeah. Now I'm running a dating service. Um, come again? A carbon dating service. I bought this astoundingly useful machine that tells me how old things are. I usually just cut them in half and count the rings. There's a reason you're not invited to birthday parties anymore. I wanted a fresh start and a new career to get my mind off that fiasco with Honest Abe. This wasn't my first choice, but I got a good deal on the carving dating equipment online, and I couldn't afford to change my sign. You're having financial problems? I'm afraid so. After my public humiliation with Lincoln, all the applicants for my dating service demanded their money back. Not to mention all the money tied up in pending litigation with the clients who watched Max's dating video. I stated very clearly up front that viewer discretion was advised. Believe me, I would love to just close up shop for a while and take a vacation. Forget about Honest Dave and all the lawsuits. It was a wardrobe malfunction! But unless I get a major windfall, I have to hope the carbon dating business takes off. 
How's business again? There's still not enough clients to make ends meet. I can't even take a vacation unless I suddenly come into a lot of money. How does carbon dating work? I don't know. Something about carbon-14 and half-lives and radiation. I'm impressed with your detailed scientific knowledge. Very professional. That's the beauty of it. I don't really need to know anything. I just aim my little machine at something and it tells me how old it is. Allow me to demonstrate. This tiki is... Oh my gosh! It's... it's 2,000 years old! This is fantastic! Old is good? Absolutely! I can have my office put on the National Register of Historic Places. I might even get a grant. I'd be rich! Can we borrow your carbon dating machine? No way! That machine is still my only chance to take care of my money problems. Unless I get a grant, since I'm now on the National Register of Historic Places. There's no way I'm letting it out of my sight. Who could possibly need a freelance carbon dating service? Plenty of people! Freelance archaeologists, independent historians, rogue paleobotanists... It's also naughty fun for your next bachelorette party! And now that Antiques Thunderdome is getting so popular, business is bound to pick up. Antiques Thunderdome? The show where common everyday people bring random junk from around the house to a giant steel cage match and engage in a no-holds-barred appraisal to the death? That's the one. Now everybody's convinced they have some priceless treasure in their attic and their home will be declared a historic monument. See you around, Sybil. What do you think of this carbon dating business, Max? If we do not learn from history, we are doomed to repeat it! Well said. That reminds me, what would happen if you put your finger in that electric socket again? Only one way to find out! I sure would like to get my hands on that carbon dating machine. I bet your hands are the same age as the rest of you, Sam. I guess we should get back to work. When you love what you do, it doesn't even feel like work. Hi, Hugh Bliss. Max Hi, I'm Hugh Bliss. Right. Max would like to give you something. For your service to the realm, we would like to appoint you Secretary of Magic and Wonder. Why, thank you, Max. But I'm afraid I can't accept a government job. Oh. oh, I'm a citizen of the universe! We would like to appoint the Secretary of Homeland Insecurity. I am wanting no part of your corrupt Yankee administration. Who wouldn't want a cushy government job? Oh, I get it now. You want me right where you can keep your eye on me. Your paranoia is sucking all the fun out of this presidency, Bosco! Max, I mean His Excellency El Jefe Maximilian I, Intimidator of the Realm, has a special surprise for you. Better get those handkerchiefs ready. This could get sentimental. Agent Superball, we have decided to reward you for your excellent service to your country for your unwavering commitment to preventing us from being where we most desperately needed to be, for your unerring devotion to being a constant hindrance in our task. For all these things and more, we now dub thee Super Bowl, Secretary of Meats and Cheeses. So we have spoken, so it shall be. All hail, Max. I'm overwhelmed, sir. I don't know what to say. Now run along to a cabinet meeting. I'm afraid I can't do that, sir. You've got to be kidding me. I still have my orders. Hey, Supes. Secretary Superball, the President would like you to take a memo. Two people of the planet Earth, we know what you've been doing. Cut it out. Hugs, your nuclear arsenal wielding leader, etc., etc. Did you get all that? No pencil, sir. Secretary of Mysterious Gaseous Emissions. All hail, Max. Secretary of the Interior. We already have one of those. Oh, exterior? We have one of those, too. Fine. Secretary of the Posterior. <laughs> <laughs> All hail, Max. Secretary in charge of guarding the war room door. Max, no. Oh, right. Uh, Secretary of Defense. Whatever. 
All hail Max. Hey, Soups. The President would like you to take another memo. Two, the U.S. House of Representatives. An upcoming bill to extend the powers of the President will be presented to you soon. As my way of thanking you for your yes vote, I've placed a small gift underneath your chair. Instructions for disarming this gift will be available as soon as... Are you getting all this, Secretary? I don't take dictation, sir. Secretary Superball, the President would like you to take a memo. I don't take dictation, sir. Max says you can take a vacation. It's April Fool's Day. With all due respect, that's kind of mean, sir. We'll be back. Roger that. Oh, boy! People of Earth, we have now changed the official date. Mark your calendars. Update your checks. All hail Max. Oh, boy! We now declare today, April 3rd, the beginning of Passover. Shalom! Let my people go! Hey, Soups. Max says you can take a vacation. It's Passover. I'm not a religious man, sir. I wouldn't feel right taking a vacation unless it was a secular holiday. We now declare today, April 8th, Easter Sunday. Cripes, we'd better start hiding eggs on the White House lawn. Already did it, Sam. Max, are these the eggs that are made of metal and shaped like a pineapple and have a pin in them? Don't be silly, Sam. I took the pins out first. Hey, an Easter egg. You mean a carefully hidden item of absolutely no actual value? Exactly. An Easter egg. True to its name, it's completely worthless. Max says you can take a vacation. It's Easter. I'm not a religious man, sir. I wouldn't feel right taking a vacation unless it was a secular holiday. We now declare today April 22nd, Earth Day. People of America, take this day to ignore all practical concerns and devote all your attention to one day of crackpot extreme environmentalist activism, which you'll forget about for the rest of the year. People of Berkeley, California, keep up the good work! Max says you can take a vacation. It's Earth Day. Very funny, sir. We now declare today, April 27th, Arbor Day. Everybody go outside today and hug a tree. Hug nothing? This year I'm hoping to get to second base. Max says you can take a vacation. It's Arbor Day. I'll tell a tree, sir. We now declare today, April 26th, Secretary's Day. That's supposed to be Administrative Professionals Day. Wow, Sam. When I picked you for Vice President, I didn't know you were such a politically correct, bleeding heart liberal. All right, then. Secretary's Day. Hey, Soups. Today is Secretary's Day. You have to take the day off. It's the law, Jack! A vacation? Permission to weep openly, sir. Not just granted, but encouraged. The forces of bureaucracy win again. I love this country. Hey, look, Max. It's the presidential discretionary budget. You have $100 million to allocate however you want. What a delightfully random and convenient figure. Hmm, Sybil left, the, Sybil left the door unlocked. She's probably living it up on some tropical island on the taxpayer's dime. I bet she's getting abducted in some sleazy nightclub, then sold into a white slavery ring, forced to do unspeakable things for a power-mad despot, before narrowly escaping his volcano-top lair with only one of her kidneys left. Don't be such a pessimist, Max. Sorry, Sam. It's just no fair we're stuck here working and she gets to have all the fun. It's Sybil's carbon dating machine. Hmm, Sybil must have read her machine wrong. It says this Tiki is only 10 years old. I thought that price tag on the bottom looked suspicious. Odd. Max, have you been dieting? It's 8 years old. 
Poor little guy was probably heading to his eighth birthday party when he got shot, stuffed, mounted, and sold in a tacky souvenir store. No, he's got that haunted look about him. I bet he offed himself and donated his body to taxidermy. You see the bright side in everything, Max. Mr. Spatchel is only one year old, but this thing says he's two. Oh no, I forgot his birthday. Don't bother. I put a piece of cake in there one time and he didn't seem to like it. This thing says Hubert is 16 years old. I wondered why he was acting all sullen and unresponsive. This thingamajig says these donuts are only a year old. It must be using the calendar of the donut mold people's burgeoning civilization. That is the only logical explanation. It says Jesse James's hand is only 14 years old. I don't believe that. Well, it says that Leonard is only 19 years old. Let that be a cautionary tale to the kids about spending too much time in casinos. It says Peepers is 34 years old. It says here Specs is 35 years old. And still in short pants. Sad, really. Hmm, Wizard's 35 years old. You're never too young for adult undergarments, Wizard. I wouldn't need them if people would stop giving me sodas. It says Peepers is 34 years old. Wait a second, I thought you three were triplets. That's right! How come you're a year younger than the other two? It was a very prolonged labor. Hmm, that's weird. It says his age is burnt sienna. That is weird. He doesn't look a day over taupe. I don't want to know how old that... What is that? Keep that away from me! Relax, Bosco. It only tells how old you are. Why do you need to know that? Did someone send you to find out how old I am? Sheesh, never mind. That's your problem with dating, Sam. You give up too easily. I don't want to... This coffee is over a month old. It's slow roasted for premium taste and maximum viscosity. The nachos are from the early 90s, but I can't get a reading on the cheese. I don't think it's organic, Sam. Well, Bosco, by my readings, these weenies date from the early Cretaceous period. Uh, da! Special bargain for you! Still tasty, half of today only. You don't understand. Your store is now a national historic place. These weenies are valuable artifacts. Really? I mean, uh, of course! In preserving heritage of my people. Just how valuable are we talking about here? We'll get back to you on that. Are these weenies beef or pork? Or woolly mammoth meat? 100% all natural ingredients. Aged to perfection. We want to buy something. Da! It's evil but necessary private enterprise. We'll take that truth serum. It's yours for only 100 million American dollars. I seem to have left my 100 million dollars in my other suit. We'll be back. Nothing for us right now. Hello, Comrade Bosco. Hail to the Chief! I don't know how you guys did it, but I just got a huge check from the government. You earned it, Bosco. It's not easy to perfectly preserve weenies that predate the discovery of fire. Not to mention the teeming microcosm growing in the bathroom. We're considering making it a national wildlife preserve. Now I can finally finish my satellite defense system. 
So, we can have the truth serum? Sure! Let me dig it up from the labs! This is a bottle of vodka. But it works! Trust me! Trust me! Get a couple of shots of that in somebody, and they'll tell you all their secrets. Thanks, Bosco! Truth serum's only useful on people not telling the truth. Truth serum's only... Truth serums. Care for some vodka, Bosco? No. I knew he wasn't really a Russian. If you really want to prove you're legit, I challenge you to take a swig of my truth serum. Truth serum? What is truth but the illusion of non-illusion? Uh, so you won't take it? Oh, I don't drink. Thank you! Care for a drink? No thanks. I'm on an all-carb diet. No liquids. Care for a drink? Thanks, but I'm not thirsty. For a drink? It's soda, right? You brought more soda. Sure, why not? Wow! That's got more kick than the other ones. Thanks, Seven Max. You guys... You guys are my best friends. Now can we get back to the deliberation? What's the point? You still think Peeper's idea is stupid. Stupid? You never told me you thought my idea was stupid. He said your idea of adding Herbert Hoover hugging the four other presidents was the stupidest thing he'd ever heard. Well, it is. Hoover wasn't even a president, which means he certainly wasn't the most loving of all the presidents. Well, at least I didn't suggest putting a parking garage in George Washington's forehead, like some four-eyed freaks I know. You little... You big... Of course you realize this means war! 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 What wondrous thing is this the death con collections ring? A flashing light above the door, there's just one thing it could mean.
Well, let's not do that again. The civil war in the Dakotas seems to be escalating, Max. Let them thin out the overpopulation of moose and strip malls for a few weeks, and then we'll step in. Look, Max, in the White House garden pond. It's Jimmy Two Teeth. We often allow lobbyists to use the pool, Sam. Jimmy's a lobbyist now? What's he lobbying for? Cheese interests? Affordable health care for the aged and underprivileged, Sam. He's a lot more multifaceted than you give him credit for. It looks like Bismarck has fallen to the West Dakotan militia. Oh no! That will wipe out the country's crucial snow and slush reserves! Your compassion for your people is heartwarming, Mr. President. It's a plate of fancy cookies. For the discriminating general with a sweet tooth and a taste for vengeance. Hey, there's gourmet coffee. In case the idea of war makes you insufficiently jittery. I've plenty juice just being in here. Let's blow stuff up! These must be for the Joint Chiefs and other quasi-important hoo-hahs. Nice screensaver! What to do in time of war? Select target, press fire. That's all it says. Looks like a remote homing beacon in the frigid Antarctic. So peaceful, so serene. Wanna blow it up? You have to ask? Dinner special tonight? Penguin flambe! Who would have suspected the Washington Monument is really a self-replenishing supply of intercontinental ballistic missiles? It's good to see it used for something more useful than corny innuendo for once. I wonder if this will have a significant impact on our delicate ecosystem. Absolutely. My ego is bigger already. The homing beacon to the Kremlin doesn't seem to be working. It was probably turned off in the spirit of Glasnost. More likely those lazy commie bastards forgot to change the batteries. Lazy former commie bastards, Max. There's no beacon for the missile to lock onto. Then we'll just have to do this the slow way. Lock and load, Sam! We're off to Red Square! Some other time, little buddy. It's the distant, peaceful world of Krypton. They mock us with their utopian society of crystal cities and absentee parents. They must be exterminated! This'll teach him to put me in the Phantom Zone. You will bow down before me! Aww. Better pull up a chair, little buddy. Well, what do you know? Bosco was right. The government really has been targeting his store for destruction. Won't he be glad when we tell him? What do you say we keep this to ourselves, Max? You're right! We don't want to ruin the surprise! Attention, Bosco shoppers! Clean up in aisle everything! Would you look at that? Bosco's satellite defense system actually works. Well played, Bosco. You're safe. But for how long?
Hi, America. I didn't see you there. As you know, I'm Maximilian I, ruler of your quaint little nation. Our borders stretch from the beautiful coasts of California to the not exactly beautiful, but still pretty nice in their own way, coasts along the eastern seaboard. At least they do now. I'm working with my executive staff, Sam, to see about getting us a little more room to work with, if you catch my drift. <laughs> but don't you worry your pretty little heads about that. For now, just sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Toodles! Where are we going, Sam? Back to the office. Shotgun! Look, stuck to the camera. That must be the homing beacon for the intercontinental ballistic missiles aimed at Bosco's store. What was that? Uh, he said, that must be the best price on baby wipes I've ever seen. That would hardly be sporting. Where are we going, Sam? After that rampaging Lincoln. Yes! Looks like the targeting beacon is still stuck on Lincoln. This is a pretty impressive temper tantrum, Sam. At this rate, he'll have enslaved all of D.C. and most of Baltimore by tomorrow morning. He gets, you're right, Max. Still, I think we should stop him. We haven't got anything better to do. Mr. President? Don't mind if I do. Quick, let's go. Shouldn't we revel a little? We don't want to miss this. Days. We broke two presidents in one afternoon. A personal best! Well, it looks like the country is saved. At least for mass hypnosis. What do you want to do now? Let's abuse my powers as leader of the free world to squeeze the middle class until they're burning their own shoes for heat! Sounds fun, but I was thinking we could treat ourselves to some chocolate frosted gut bombs and then have a little target practice down to the Smithsonian. Sam, you're my best friend!
Agent Chuckles, report. Query status. Lincoln Gambit, four score, stroke seven. Query not acknowledged and acceptable timeout parameters. Error. Error. 